G'day guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton, which is one of the most beautiful acoustic songs of all time. For the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve in your guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Now I will note that when Eric Clapton plays this, he actually uses his thumb for a lot of these bass notes. However, I'll save you the trouble and I'll teach you without using the thumb. However, if you want to use your thumb for the bass notes, then you can do that as well. Okay, so let's start with our finger picking basics. Now your thumb will generally take care of the sixth, fifth and fourth strings and your index, middle and ring finger will take care of the third, second and first strings respectively. Ideally, they shouldn't pluck any other strings other than the ones they're assigned to. Okay, so let's start with the intro and there's just one line of tab here, which is really simple. Now to bring the song in, there's a couple of lead in notes. So we're just gonna hit the open sixth string and hammer on to the second fret with our middle finger, like that. So that's our lead in note. And then we get to the actual main part of the intro. Now, these four bars of tab are actually the same as the first break as well. So once you learn this intro, it's the same as the break. So after the lead in hammer on, we're then going to get to an A shape like this. Now the best way to play it is to bar your next finger across the second frets of the fourth, third and second strings. Now we're going to pluck the fifth string, the third string, and then the second string, but we're going to hammer on and pull off onto the third fret of the second string with our ring finger. You can also use your middle finger as well, but I prefer using my ring. So that's a hammer on and pull off. And that's a really quick motion, like that. And then we end this section by going back to the third string. So that happens right after the hammer on, like that. So those four plucks for this bar, And all the plucks are on quarter beats. So one and two and. And together with the hammer on lead in at the start of the song. One and two and. For our next section, we're going to go to an E slash G sharp. So to play that, our index and middle finger will be on the fourth frets of the sixth and third strings. And your ring finger will be on the fifth fret of the second string. So that'll look like this. And we're gonna pinch the sixth third and second strings together. And then on the four beat, we'll just pluck the third and second strings together. And then we'll shift down to this F sharp minor shape. So keep your fingers on the same strings. There's no need to lift your fingers. We'll just slide everything down to the second fret like this. And we're gonna pinch that on the end beat after the four. So this section, three and four and. And in total for the first bar with the lead in lick, So we're gonna hold that pinch out into the next bar. And for the next bar, we'll stay in this position. On the end beat after the one, we'll hit the bass note, and then we'll pluck the second and third strings, and then back to the bass note. So one and two and. And then we're going to just lift our index finger, and now our bass note is the open sixth string. And for this four note section, we're gonna start with a pinch, so sixth, third, and second strings and then bass note, third and second, and back to bass note. And that's gonna be a pattern that you should get familiar with. A pinch, and then the bass note, third and second, and bass note, because we're gonna be using that quite a bit for the rest of this song. For the third bar, we're going to go to a D slash F sharp. So it's the exact same shape as our E slash G sharp, just down two frets. So we're gonna pinch this shape with that picking pattern that I just showed you before that we should get familiar with. So the pinch, then the bass note, third and second strings, and bass note. And together. We'll now lift our index finger, so the bass note is the open sixth string. We'll do a pinch, and then the open sixth string by itself. And then we'll change positions. 
So index finger now goes on the first fret of the third string, we'll pinch and then hit the open sixth string by itself. So that section. And the bar in total. And then for the final bar, we're gonna to go to our A chord again. And remember, we're just barring out your next finger across these strings. And we're gonna play this for one of those typical picking patterns. So pinch, bass note, third and second bass note. So that's one picking pattern. And for the second half of this bar, we'll do a pinch, bass note, third and second, and then that lead in hammer on that we had at the start of the song to end this line of tab. So the final bar, and all together the intro with the included lead in note sounds like this. That's it for the intro. And as I mentioned before, that's also the same as break number one. Now we move on to the verse, which is really simple because it's just one line of tab. And I will be showing you a couple of variations of the verse if you want to spice things up and add some licks and fills. So for the standard verse, the first two bars are identical to what we had in the intro with one minor exception. And that's where we go to the E slash G sharp. So instead of pinching it and holding out for a beat, we're actually gonna pinch it and then hit the bass note and then the third and second strings. So three and four, and then go to our F sharp minor. So that extra bass note is the only thing we add to the first two bars of this verse. Other than that, it's the same as the intro. So it sounds like this. One. For our third bar, we'll go to our D slash F sharp. We'll start with a pinch of the bass note, third and second strings. Then we'll go bass note, third and second strings, and then open first string. So one and two and. Then you'll slide your ring finger back down to the second fret, lift your index finger. So it's just these two fingers on the second fret of the third and second string. We're gonna play this shape for one typical picking pattern. So pinch, bass note, third and second bass note. So that bar in total. And then we're going to go to an E major chord shape like this for our fourth bar. We'll play this for one picking pattern. So pinch, bass note, third and second bass note. And then we'll slide our index finger up to the second fret of the third and second string. So you'll bar across there, pluck them to bass note, and then with your ring and middle finger, put them on the fourth and third frets of the third and second strings, pluck them, and then end with a bass note. So the last four plucks, three and four and, and that fourth bar, one, And that's it for the verse, which is really quite simple. So it sounds like this all together. So that's it for the verse. Now I'll show you two variations to the verse that you can add into your own playing if you want to. These are optional though, and in the recording, these licks are actually a second guitar played on top of the first, but you can incorporate it into one guitar if you want to, and it sounds really cool. So where we're going to add the lick is actually in the second bar of this verse. So nothing else will need to change, just the second bar. So the fill in the first verse variation will sound like this.
Now to play that, we'll start from our F sharp minor position. So we're gonna hit that bass note on the end beat after the one still, and then we'll insert our lick. So you'll start by barring your index finger across the first and second strings of the fifth fret. We're gonna pluck that and quickly slide up to the seventh fret. And then go back to the fifth fret, pluck them. And then we'll shift to this position. So index finger on the fourth fret of the third string, middle finger on the fifth fret of the second string. We're gonna be pinching the sixth, third, and second strings all together. And again, we'll be sliding up by two frets as you pinch. And then we'll go back to our original position, pluck the third and second strings. So that little chunk. And then we'll go down to the second frets of the third and second strings. So have your index finger barn across that. We'll do another pinch on the same string, so sixth, third, and second strings. And then with your pinky finger, put it up on the fifth fret of the second string. And we'll just pluck the third and second strings together. So those last two plucks. And that's it for the fill, which sounds like this with the bass note included at the start on the end beat after the one. One. And together with the rest of the verse, verse variation one sounds like this. So that's a verse variation number one that you can throw into your playing to spice things up a little bit. Now for verse variation two, again, that fill is going to happen in the second bar. So from this F sharp minor, we'll start with that bass note on the end beat after the one, but then we'll go and put our index finger across the second frets of the third, second and first strings. We'll start by plucking the first and second strings together. And then with your ring finger, put it on the fourth fret of the first string, pluck those same two strings. And then for the next pluck, we'll pinch the open sixth string and hammer on our pinky finger onto the fifth fret of the first string. And then let go of your pinky finger, pluck the first and second strings together again. And then lift your ring finger, pinch the sixth, first and second strings. And then for our final pluck, your pinky finger goes onto the fifth fret of the second string. And we're gonna pluck the third and second strings here. So all of that in total. So you're gonna play that open sixth string on the three and four beats for this fill. And together for this fill, one and two. And in context with the full verse, this is what verse variation two will sound like. But of course, you don't need to play those verse variations. You can just use that simple verse that I taught you earlier on. Next, we get to the chorus and there's two lines of tab here. We're gonna start with an F sharp minor. So you can play with as the full bar chord, but let's make things simple. So we'll just fret the strings that we need to. So this is the same shape that we had in the verse. We're gonna be playing this for one of those regular picking patterns. So where we pinch, bass note, third and second, and bass note. So you're gonna play this F sharp minor for two of those patterns. So one and two and three and four and. And then for our next position, keep your ring finger where it is, but we'll slide our index and middle finger down to the first fret. So it's the same shape as that D slash F sharp, but just down one fret. We're gonna be playing this for two of those picking patterns. So one. For the third bar, lift your index and middle finger, and your middle finger can actually go onto the second fret of the fourth string. And we're going to play two picking patterns in this shape. So one and two and three and four and. 
For the fourth bar, we'll go to an F sharp seven chord. So it's the same as an F bar chord, up one fret, but then you'll actually lift your pinky finger as well. Now this is one instance where your index and middle finger will actually go up to the fourth and third strings. So they'll leave their typical home positions and go up to these strings. So we're going to be pinching this position for one picking pattern. So start with the pinch, bass note, fourth and third strings, and back to bass note. So then we'll change positions. So your ring and pinky finger will go onto the fourth frets of the fourth and third strings. We'll do a pinch here, hit the bass note, and then hit the second fret of the second string. So you should have your index finger barred here to get that second fret ringing. And then after that second string pluck, we go back to the bass note. So the second set of four notes, and this fourth bar in total. In total for the first line of tab, Next line of tab, from this shape, we'll just move to a B minor seven position. So you can keep your ring finger where it is. You'll just slide your index finger down one string, and then your middle finger will go onto the third fret of the second string, and you can lift your pinky finger here. Your index and middle finger will return back to their home positions. We're gonna be doing a pinch here of the fifth, third, and second strings. Bass note, third and second, and back to bass note, so. And then we'll do another pinch, bass note, third and second, and then hit the open sixth string on the end beat after the four. So one and two and three and four and. At this point, you can get your fingers into a D position. So index on the second fret of the third, ring finger on the third fret of the second string. So you'll leave that open sixth string ringing on the end beat after the one in the next bar, we'll pluck the third and second strings twice, back to the open sixth string, and then the third and second strings one more time. And then on the end beat after the four, we'll play that lead in hammer on, like so. And for the second line of tab, one, And that's it for the chorus, which sounds like this all together. So after the chorus, we get to break number one. And as I mentioned earlier, break number one is identical to the intro. So nothing new to learn there. There's another verse and then there's another chorus. And then we get to break number two. Now break number two is almost identical to break number one and in the intro with the exception of the last two notes. So this occurs on the end beat after the four. So instead of doing that hammer on, on the end beat after the four, like we did in the intro, we're gonna hit the open fifth string and then the second fret of the fifth string. So those two notes at the end, that's the only thing that differs between break number two and break number one. So break number two in total. Next we get to our bridge and there's two lines of tab here. We're gonna start with the C chord. I'm gonna start by hitting the bass note, fourth string, third and second, and back to bass note. So. And then we're going to get to a G slash B chord. So it's the same as a G, but you don't need to push down the sixth string. We're gonna play this with a typical picking pattern. So a pinch, then a bass note, third and second, 
and then bass note. So first bar. Then we'll go to an A minor chord, play this for a typical picking pattern. And then a D slash F sharp and play this for a typical picking pattern. Our bass note is now the sixth string. And then we'll go to a G for one picking pattern. Back down to the D slash F sharp. Then to an E minor seven, so index and middle finger on the second fret of the fifth and fourth strings. One picking pattern here. And then we'll go back to the D slash F sharp. We'll do a pinch bass note and up to the G chord and do a pinch there. So the last three plucks. And that's it for the first line of tab, which sounds like this. Second line of tab, we'll start with the C chord, play this for one typical picking pattern. G slash B for one picking pattern. A minor for one picking pattern. D slash F sharp for one picking pattern. G for one picking pattern. D slash F sharp for one picking pattern. And then for the final bar, it's the same as the final bar in the verse. So it's that E major, which slowly moves up. So. And that's it for the bridge, which sounds like this all together. One. Next we get to the solo section. Now the solo section is more or less the same as the verse. There's two lines of tab here though. There's a minor variation and that just occurs for the timing. So for this first bar, our A and the hammer on pull off is exactly the same. But then we'll do a mute. So just drop your hands onto the strings to stop anything ringing out. And then we'll go up to our E slash G sharp. And instead of playing this on the three beat, we're playing it on the end beat after the three. And then we'll do another mute on the four beat and then go down to the F sharp minor. And then the rest of this is the same as the regular verse. So that's the only thing that differs. It occurs in that first bar. One. So that's the only thing you need to consider, but apart from that, it's exactly the same as the verse. So in total, the rhythm for the solo section sounds like this. One. After that solo section, there's another chorus. And after the chorus, there's another break. So break number three. Now in break number three, you can play the regular break, number one, so the same as the intro, but I'm gonna show you a variation here that has a really cool lick at the end, and I love playing this lick. It's a lot of fun to play. So this is optional. You can play break number one if you want to, but I'm gonna call this break number three. For break number three, everything is the same as the other breaks except when we get to the final bar. So we'll get to this A chord, we'll do the pinch, the bass note by itself, and then the third and second strings. And then in this position, we'll play the lick. So you're gonna hit the second fret of the fourth string, hammer on to the fourth fret, 
pluck the third string, do another hammer on, and then pluck the second string, do a hammer on and pull off on the third string. After that hammer on and pull off, your ring finger will be on the fourth fret of the third string, hit that, and then hit the second fret of the fourth string, but we'll hammer on to the fourth fret there. There's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs here, but you need to do this all in one smooth motion and not rush anything. The timing is quite even, so. Don't rush your hammer-ons like this. All the notes need to ring out with an even amount of time. Like so. So hammer-on, 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 pull-off hammer on at the end. One more time. And in total with the break. After that break, we go to our final verse. After that final verse, there's one more chorus, and then finally, the outro to the song. And the outro is basically identical to the intro, except for the final bar. So for the final bar, we're just gonna be playing a lick on the A chord, and it's gonna be really nice. We're going to just play the A chord like this. We're just gonna glide across all the strings from the fifth string to the second string. But when you get to the second string, hammer on and pull off. After the hammer on and pull off, fourth fret of the third string, hit the fourth string and then hammer on to the fourth fret, and then hit the third string. So that's the first part of the lick. And then we're gonna go up to this shape here, which is just an A triad. Ring finger on the seventh fret, middle on the sixth, and index finger on the fifth fret of the second string. And we're just gonna strum from the fifth string onwards. That ends the song. So the outro. The final thing I'll teach you is the solo and it's really nice and easy. This is played on an electric guitar in the actual recording but it actually sounds quite nice on the acoustic guitar as well. So we're gonna start with the ninth fret of the first string with your ring finger. Now this first lick is gonna occur on the two beat. So one and two is when we hit this note and we're gonna quickly slide down to the seventh fret and then hit the fifth fret with our index finger. So one and two and. And then on the end beat after the three, we're gonna go up to the 12th fret and hit that and slide up to the 14th and then go to the seventh fret, hit that and quickly slide up to the ninth. So this first bar, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... For the third bar, we're going to hit the 10th fret of the first string, hit it and slide up to the 12th, and then hit the seventh fret, quickly slide up to the ninth. Do that again, but we'll slide up and down quickly then 5th fret, and then end on the 7th fret. So that whole phrase, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... So that's it for the first line of tab. Now the second line of tab is basically identical, except the timing for that first bar changes a little bit. Instead of two separate phrases, we're bringing them together. So it will sound like this, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and one and two and three and four and then the final phrase is the same. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So quite a simple little solo there, but very, very powerful. And those are all the parts that you need to learn. Now in terms of structure, we go intro, verse, chorus, break number one, then there's verse, chorus, and there's break number two, 
then you have the bridge, the solo section, chorus, and then break number three. And then you have another verse, another chorus, and then finally the outro. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, those verse variations can be used anywhere where there's a verse if you wanna spice your playing up a little bit and make it sound a bit more interesting. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. Big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals through this playthrough. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.